Hello there, my fellow explorator captains, and welcome back to another episode in our diverse series on interesting Warhammer 40k locations. This playlist initially started when I wanted to talk about some famous planets from the Imperium, but as my more recent Port Wonder videos hopefully proved, there are a lot of lore-rich places in this galaxy which are definitely worth talking about, and they are not always planets. Nevertheless, today we shall return to default mode and indeed describe another Imperial world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fang's world. I am your tour guide, the grimdark narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Fang's world is a small, grimy Imperial Hive planet, located to the galactic coreward in the Josian Reaches subsector of the Calyxis sector. It serves as a substation service depot of the Imperial Navy's Battlefield Calyxis. It is suggested that many cults and other dubious elements test their influence on the population of Fang's world, using it as a manageable testbed before moving on to dominant worlds like Scintilla or Malfi. Chaos cults and cult activity certainly exist here. Feng's world's most notable feature, though, is its Library of Knowing, one of the Calyxis sector's most comprehensive sources of data outside of the Prowl system. The Calyxian Conclave of the Inquisition has made several relatively subtle attempts to close the library down, due to its esoteric contents. The library still remains a family-run enterprise, overseen by the planetary governor's family, the Mercurial Noble House Vakon. But more on this mysterious library in a few minutes. To many outsiders, Feng's world has a reputation as a grimy and rough place, a hive world that, while notoriously independent in sector politics, is seen as lacking the significance or sheer size of the likes of Scintilla or Malfi. The truth of the matter is that Feng's world independence and measure of self-sufficiency is bought at a high price and its bustling facade hides many dark secrets. The Feng's world that most outsiders actually see is the hive city of Nova Castilla, a vast towering edifice of sky-piercing spires and busy supply depots, noble enclaves, covered hab stacks, and bustling neon-lit entertainment domes. Although a little ramshackle and dirty, it is not unlike many other hives across the Imperium. Castilia houses much of the planet's famously fickle ruling elite and the bulk of the planet's population. However, what is not widely known is that it also holds two subordinate hive cities in a merciless grip to ensure its own position. These are the hives that many offworlders, if they are lucky, never get to see. The first of these, Magna Gorsk, sinks deep into the crust of Feng's world. It is heavily industrialized and is a hellish place of molten metal and volcanic fire, where warship armor is forged and poisonous fumes fill the air. This hive exists only to serve the Battlefield Calyxis port anchorage in high orbit. The conditions here are so harsh that a native of gunmetal city on Scintilla or the Laves Worlds would consider themselves lucky to stay where they are. Magnagorsk is controlled by the fractious and pitiless Foundry Guilds. To them, labor and metal are the only coins of the realm, and one guildmaster would think of nothing of sabotaging or murdering his rivals, or kidnapping entire work gangs to help meet his own production quota. Life is very cheap in Magnagorsk, violence commonplace, and death and maiming everyday affairs. But even the helots toiling there are thankful that it is not worse they could be exiled to Volg instead. Rather than towering above or delving into the crust of the Earth, Volg sprawls for hundreds of square kilometers like a vast cancer of corroded gantries and phosphor-lit domes. The sprawl itself is made up of vast moisture traps, reprocessing plants, waste biomass recycling reservoirs, and the mad clusters of still-supported shantytowns clinging to them. The reality is that without these facilities' output, famine, pollution, and poison water would destroy Feng's world in just a few years. The toil of these millions is required to keep the other billions alive. Named by many as the vilest and most misbegotten place in the entire Calyxis sector, 
The toxicity and terrible conditions of Volg are at the very limit of human survivability. Matters are made much worse by Fengsworld many unutterably lethal and horribly mutated native animals. Volg was initially set up as a vast open penal colony for Fengsworld, and the surrounding subsector as well, and the inmates were left on their own to form their societies and make what they could of their lives as long as clean water and protein flowed up hive where it was needed. The control was further maintained through the trade in cheap arms and vital supplies, and it transpired soon afterwards that Volk's population was too busy staying alive to attempt any kind of revolt or escape. Over the centuries, Volk, to the surprise of many, actually prospered and became a hive city in its own right, with a population of tens of millions while the new inmates, or clean meat as they are nicknamed there, are sentenced to exile there still, the majority of the inhabitants are now freeborn, some, air tags, six generations in the Volk, and they are free to leave, if they can afford the exorbitant passage out. Life in Volk is nasty, brutal and short. For the Volgites, mutation is very common, and violence is the only rule of law. Few death worlds breed hardier and more ruthless fighters than those surviving in Volg. But for the Volgite themselves, they are born survivors that even a Katakan could respect. The Library of Knowing is one of the greatest repositories of record, scholarship, and wisdom in the entirety of the Calixis sector. It is a vast assemblage of works acquired by Lord Militant Golgena Angevin's coterie of scholars, scribes, and advisors during the Angevin Crusade, and also from his own private collections. Thus, the Library of Knowing is an enduring relic of the very foundations of the sector. It was one of the liberator's dying indulgences that gave the Library of Knowing its unique status which has seen it remain to this very day under the authority and care of House Vakon, the ruling house of Feng's world. Angevin's ink-stained minions assembled a wondrous collection of tomes, data cores, and even art from all over the Imperium, including illuminated works from distant terra, loose parchments by forgotten authors, and curled scrolls of ancient lore plundered from the vaults of renegade lords. It is this collection forming the core of works held in the library, though a great deal more has been added over the centuries by House Vakon and many other private donors, state seizures and bequests. It is open to anyone who can bribe, intrigue or inherit their way into its exclusive list of readers. The building itself is a vast vertical drum of worn metal jutting from the spires of Nova Castilia. Its internal spaces are divided by pillars and walls of stone, and its open galleries crossed by gantries and walkways of tarnished brass. Some inside the Inquisition are certain that the library holds many proscribed works in its secret stacks, despite repeated searches which have turned up exactly nothing. This supposition is made all the more likely as it is the known birthplace of the tainted Atheanist philosophy. Curiously, the library did remain largely untouched in the face of the inquisitorial disapproval, in spite of its dubious association with this proscribed demon-influenced tradition. This has led many to believe that the library has many powerful patrons beyond just the fickle House Vakon. Maybe someone within the Holy Ordos itself. The philosophy of Atheanism is said to have originated with the writings of Eris Transform, by one of the library's chief curators, Julius Atianos. After the mysterious disappearance of Atianos, fragments of the manuscript still find their way into the hands of jaded collectors, looking to learn the secret of reigniting their lost curiosity and wonderment at the universe. Instead, all they will find is madness and demonic possession. The sisters of the Order's Dialogus also maintain a small contingent at the Library of Knowing on Feng's world. Another famous export, if you will, of Feng's world is a creature known as the Feng's world Pit Thing. Somewhere between 2 and 3 meters high at the shoulder, the Pit Thing is a vicious predatory beast dwelling in the depths of the hives of Feng's world. They are often identified by their strong chemical smell. The Pit Things are bulky carnivores with four legs, webbed claws and feet, making them very agile swimmers, 
and a strong resistance to the typical chemical and toxic hazards of industrial hives. They have four eyes arranged symmetrically in a vaguely canine skull, while their mouths are circular with razor-sharp teeth meant to rend and tear. They are non-sentient and seem singularly unintelligent. They use their size and strength aggressively in combat, often charging into battle with furious rage. Those unfortunate enough to be fighting one must be wary of its acidic drool, as they should be of their rending claws. The value of each one of them makes their capture very lucrative, although very dangerous as well. Once a pit thing is captured, it is placed into an iron cage, and delivered to the arenas to provide the blood sport for the hive population. The so-called Pale Pits of Volkhive are infamous for utilizing alien creatures in their gladiatorial matches. Although the Adeptus Arbitae struggle to suppress these heretical hunts, due to the amount of money involved, every time one beast hunting group is taken down, two more pop up to resume their operation. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Imperial Hive World of Fang's World, and its unique and picturesque locations for today. It seems that in 40k, whenever you think you learned about a truly terrible place to live in, you find out about another one which is considerably worse. Did you know about Feng's world prior to today? Is it among your favorite worlds of the Imperium? What makes it interesting to you and why? Let us all know if you want in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor protects.